We travel past Hannah's Monument and continue south along Highway 51 to the village of Gilbertsville. It is one of very few villages in the country recognized in its entirety as an historic district. We meet the local historian in the village library, built of stone as a schoolhouse in 1818. The people who first came here came uh, settled right after the um, Fort Stanwix Treaty of 1768 opened up this part of New York State and it was officially the western frontier from here to the Unadilla River, which is our western boundary. What attracted them to this area was that it was beautiful farmland and actually there was, um, it was pretty heavily wooded. Well, they were very much attracted by the uh, economic development possibilities here and um, they came here from mostly the, the first settlers who got over here came from New England and then they were rapidly followed by people from England directly and uh, from France in this part of Otsego County. But the, the main focus of the whole development and, and movement here was the economic opportunities that were provided. The entire village of Gilbertsville was almost lost to a U.S. flood control project that threatened to flood the valley, creating a lake. When the village was awarded recognition as a historic district, it was, at long last, spared destruction. Gilbertsville was only the second such village in the country to receive the distinction. Come here to the post office and you'll find that the post office boxes are the original ones from the 1800s and you have to operate them by knowing your combination and then you can get your stamps here at this neat little window. Do you have any of those sailor stamps that came out recently? Oh, there they are. Thank you. The fruit of my labor when I get bored to Tell me that it's mightier than the sword It's sweet and subtle as a song of the wren Well, if a drunk man's words are sober man's mind It's all the same to her unless it's written on that line Everything fades away without my pen One of the buildings that would have been lost to the dam project is the Major's Inn. This crown jewel of the community was built by Major James T. Gilbert on the site of the original Gilbert family homestead. It's a Tudor-style building. It has approximately 52 rooms. It was built in 1897 as a home, and then it mushroomed into a hotel, and now it's a restoration site that we use for rental. The plans for the future, I'm hoping within the next, next year, maybe a year and a half, having the second floor completely done so we can use it as a, a rental for weddings so they can stay over and maybe a small B&B. No one owns it outright. It's, it's owned by a foundation, but no one outright. It's like a community type owned building. If you need an excuse to come to Gilbertsville, Actually, you don't need an excuse, but if you do, come here in the spring because the Morris men, and by the way, the Morris men are not from Morris. It's named after the Morris dance. Uh, they come here in the spring and they do the Morris dance, which is a rite of spring, and it certainly is a darn good excuse to come down here. The annual visit of the Morris Men is one of the most treasured events in the area. It is the premier dance weekend for Morris dancing from coast to coast. Visit Gilbertsville and welcome spring at the Majors Inn. Driving down the red wind down in South Carolina Couldn't see the clearing growth Ran into a big suit with bad steps in magic Couldn't win at one time, the famous hotel, the Stag's Head Inn, was located here. 
that was lost to fire in 1895. Now there is a park here and a fountain. It's called the Overlook Park, and that's very aptly named because you get a very nice view of the village from here. You walk out the door, but I'll do anything for you. Yes, I do anything for you. If you ask me to swim the seven seas off by the crocodile, I'll pull on my swimming trunk. Many travelers, when passing through Gilbertsville, are beckoned to stop and visit, and a few decide to stay. Artists like Harvey Mark, who moved his furniture shop from New York City to set up shop in rural America. He found the perfect space in the old Gilbertsville School's cafeteria. And quilt maker Suzanne Beto, whose studio is upstairs with other artist studios in the Tudor style Gilbert building. I know life is never easy, I've always had it rough. Good things come those who wait, but it's never been good enough. Since you came into my life, you filled my heart with love. Now you want right here in the heart of Gilbertsville. We stopped into a little country store, the Value A Country Store, thinking that it would be just a store. Well, actually, there's a little diner in the back where you can have lunch or breakfast. And it, it's sort of, I can find no other way to describe it except to say it was like being dropped somewhere in the middle of Europe. The, the flavor here is so European. Uh, you could almost say it's like a tourist destination, except it's not touristy at all because the people here are genuine, they're friendly, and the feeling is that of, of history. The overstuffed sandwiches were just out of this world, delicious. And don't leave here without trying their German potato salad. It is made fresh on the premises by the owner, John, and you're gonna feel like you're in Germany eating this potato salad. It's incredible. It's Monday, where the three rivers meet. And I swear that girl put a spell on me. We never laughed so long, we Steve and Big Daddy Lee. Oh, what a feeling it is. Someone else who was drawn to the beauty of the Butternut Valley is Alan Skolnick. He is one of the founders of Solgar, the nutritional supplement company founded in 1947. He and his wife now spend the majority of the year here at their South Wind Farms. The farm is overseen by caretakers Kevin and Laura Burnside. Mr. Skolnick purchased the farm in 1977. He, at that time he had a few standard bred horses, which are also known as trotters, and um, wanted a place that he could come up to relax from his business and be with his horses. My husband and I have managed the farm since 1988, and we've worked here since 81. And we um, basically oversee everything. We oversee the feeding, care, health of all the animals. Yes, we've got Highland cattle, Jacob sheep, Golden Guernsey goats, llamas, a donkey, swans, peacocks, pheasants, um, pygmy goats, feigning goats, boar goats, a little bit of everything. <laughs> The Goldens and the Jacobs are rare breeds, and so part of it is conservation. But with the Jacobs, we're able to sell all over the country, and they actually pay for themselves. Uh, the Golden Guernseys are rare worldwide. I believe there's only about 500 worldwide, and we're the only breeder of purebreds in the United States. We sell males to other people across the country who are crossbreeding Goldens. We do a lot of tours with Head Start and nursery schools. Anybody that contacts us, we're pretty laid back and easy going. South Wind Farms is proud of its facilities and animals and welcomes you to visit. You can learn more at southwindfarms.org. To see 